Okay, so let's look at question five of the tutorial. <coughs> and here we're given, so we're looking at one mole of a perfect gas at some temperature uh, expanded isothermally, so that's a very important point from an initial pressure to a final pressure in two ways. Firstly, irreversibly, and then against an, a constant external pressure of one atmosphere. So in other words, it's an irreversible process. So we have a reversible process, firstly, and an irreversible process. <coughs> right, and then we're asked to calculate all the parameters for each part. So um, I think what I want to start off with is basically isothermally, you know, immediately implies a few things for us. So you can always, when you have that, then immediately you know delta U is equal to zero and delta H equals zero. And even though I don't like you just writing that, um, you need to know why it is equal to zero. I mean, it's to do with the equipartition theorem and that delta is del u is a function of temperature. And I mean, if the initial and final temperatures are the same, then it means that you would have the same function um, minus each other, then you know, you'd get zero. The same for the enthalpy, but you know, you can write that. So, and then that also implies from the first law. So, you know, from the first law, so that our work would be equal to minus the heat. So we already have sort of a bunch of things. So we've actually sorted out the delta U and the delta H, and we know there's a relationship between work and heat. <coughs> All right. So, okay, so let's start. So A. So it says reversibly. So um, first thing that I would do when it says reversibly, I would right also when i read the word reversibly i would say that delta s total um, is zero that gives me i mean immediately i know delta s total is zero so in other words then from there on i would know the delta s system is equal to minus delta s surroundings which is the second law of thermodynamics you know so to that together with so now we've also sort of um, eliminated another thing that we need to calculate right so all that we need to do is we need to calculate either work or heat on either the the entropy of the system and the surrounding and then we've calculated everything that we need for a okay in order for this question because it's really incredibly long and i don't want to make a 45 minute video of me just writing out things i think i think i'm going to stay with this basically introducing with how you need to calculate these things and then i'm going to give the just the answer so we can talk about um, what they are okay so for isothermal reversible processes we know that work is defined by the equation minus nrt lin of vf over vi because that's the integrated form of it it's defined as such for isothermal work um, <coughs> but we're not given the um, we're not given the volumes we're given the pressure right we're given the yeah, initial pressure and final pressure but we can actually use uh, Boyle's law remember so Boyle's law just as a sub note here tells us that the volume ratio is equal to the pressure ratio in a specific manner. So in other words, work can be rewritten in a nice way as this. So this is a very neat trick um, if you can remember, if you ever have something like that. You can of course, you know, go calculate the pressure values or the volumes if you um, are really interested but it's going to be a lot of work <laughs> a lot of work anyway um yeah anyway so this is a very quick and neat way that you can do it um, so then you should get a value of minus 2.74 kilojoules for the work and then that of course means that the heat is equal to plus 2.74 kilojoules you know, from what we wrote up up on top there. Okay. Um, 
Now we can do one or two things. We can either calculate the system's entropy change. So the system's entropy change, remember we always have that the entropy change of the system is equal to NCVM uh, lin of TF over TI plus NR lin VF over VI, and in this case we have an isothermal process, so in other words this first section becomes zero, so then we only have NR lin VF over VI, and then we can use our trick again to write that in terms of the pressure, so we can write PI over PF, okay, so we can either do that, or we can s calculate the surroundings entropy using the fact that Q of the surroundings divided by the temperature, which might be the easier option here, because I mean, otherwise we have to, oops, this needs, there too, needs to be a lint. <coughs> you see there's a lint. Um, <coughs> I can actually use my lasso tool. Let's just make it nice and neat. Cool. I'm going to rub out the lint. Right, so we can use that. So then we can just plug in those values there. So I think that's the easier option. I mean, you can debate me if you want to. I mean, it's a free country. You can really do what you want. So I mean, I get a value of 9.13 kilojoules um, for the surroundings. And then, of course... Oh, my apologies, this is of course, <coughs> this is negative, so it should be actually negative, so let me just do this correctly. So, yeah, this is, this is a very important point. So, if you, let me just get to a new page here. So, delta is surroundings is equal to Q surroundings over T, right, which is equal to minus Q reversible over T. So, and that is, that Q reversible is actually this heat here. Because remember, the heat that the surroundings, the, the heat of the surroundings is the opposite of the, that of the system. So this heat that we calculate here, on top here is that of the system <coughs> so the system absorbs 2.74 kilojoules of heat but the surrounding is ex excludes or gives off 2.74 kilojoules of heat um, to um, to the system so in other words it's heat is going to be negative that so in other words it's minus 9.13 joules per kelvin it's a very important distinction we could also have gone the other way around and said the s of the system is just equal to q rev over t then you would have used plus 2.74 over 300 and then you would get, of course, plus 9.13 joules per kelvin. Right. So just always make sh ensure that you're using the correct quantity or the correct sign. Um, don't be an idiot like I was just two seconds ago. <coughs> yeah. Um, so just check that. Um, that's actually why it's always, <laughs> I almost want to say, it's always safer to go this route because then you don't have to keep track of signs and whatnot. Um, <coughs> yeah, so if you're not confident with the signs, go that route. If you are confident with the signs, then you just need to quickly argue, you know, where's the heat going? So um, then you have the correct direction of that heat flow and that will give you where it is going. All right, okay, so that was A. So let's look at B. Oh, so for B, <coughs> it says 
um, against the constant external pressure of one atmosphere. Okay, so now basically what happens is our work changes. So our work is no longer reversible. So, uh, of course, the work changes. So the work becomes the irreversible work. So that's that. Also, we can't no longer delta s total is larger than zero. Um, we also no longer have um, <coughs> what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, actually, I mean uh, one thing that we can use is oops, a delta s system won't change because it's a part independent function so that is luckily still 9.13 joule per kelvin so that's cool and nice you don't have to worry about that um, and then yeah so okay then the rest of the things we need to we need to actually calculate right so uh, I've always, I don't know why I always write this, it needs to be delta V. Okay, so you're going to calculate your work from your changes in volume, which you're going to get from the ideal gas equation, and eventually going to end up with minus 1.66 kilojoules. Okay. Um, <coughs> we still have that, you know, delta H and delta u is equal to zero delta u is equal to zero so in other words we have that work is equal to minus q is well actually q q is equal to minus the work this is ir so this is plus 1.66 kilojoule right um, entropy of the system is sorted but now what is going to change so remember the entropy change of the surroundings is dependent on this heat value here so this heat value is um, so the system absorbs 1.66 kilojoules of heat it means the surroundings had to give off 1.66 kilojoule of heat over 300 kelvin so that means we have minus 5.53 joule per kelvin right okay and then all that's left is to calculate delta S total. And it's just the sum of those two things, and it is positive 3.5. which is spontaneous and it should be for an irreversible process that makes more sense right so that is what we should get and of course you know the, the like the nice written out things are in the notes so you don't have to worry too much about what it is i just want to talk about the most important parts of this so remember so for an irreversible system what do we know Irreversible means that this is our work, how we calculate the work. Um, then important, irreversible means our total entropy is zero, so we can't just equate this, the entropy change for the system and the surroundings. Though the system's entropy change doesn't change from up on top here. So we can still, technically, we still use this equation to calculate it. Right, even though we didn't use that equation to calculate it, but it would be the same in this case um, 
you will see even though if you use this equation on top here you would have gotten oops you would have gotten this plus 9.13 so that's why and it so it remains the same whether or not we use a reversible or irreversible process because the conditions remain the same that's the important factor if the conditions remain the same no matter the process because entropy is a state function that remains the same however what changed for the surroundings is its conditions changed in the sense that um, there was now a different uh, difference applied to remember it's the system system remains isothermal the surrounding does not remain isothermal necessarily it supplies enough heat to the system to remain isothermal so that's why it's not a state function in or i say st it is a state function but that's why it changed in this case and it is dependent on the heat solely what the system is but the negative of what the system gives off or in other words if the system gives off heat it absorbs it if the system takes up heat it supplies it and technically if you think about it this the surroundings is what allows the system to remain isothermal so the surroundings is this big pool around us you know your body is the system and the surroundings is everything around you you know the the climate doesn't necessarily change when you have a fever but you cool down a little bit when um, you jump in a swimming pool but the swimming pool doesn't necessarily change a, a whole lot right um, that's kind of the idea of, of what the surroundings is but it had to give some of its heat to you or absorb some of your heat for example there had to be some heat exchange between that and that's what we're calculating here so just keep track of what the what heat you use where essentially or if you want a foolproof way always calculate your system always calculate your system um, entropy using this equation and then eliminate depending on what the process is and always calculate your surroundings change using the heat but just remember it is the opposite sign of the one for the system that's basically as simple as i can put it and then you just sum the two to get the total or you can remember for the total it's positive when it's irreversible and zero when it's reversible okay cool and because that will sometimes help you to get with what maybe some of the others i think that gives you a good enough idea maybe you're more confused than ever but um, such is life as well